Welcome back to the week one edition of the John Carroll Football Preview Show for the 2022 season. And joining us now in studio, a very special guest. He is the interim head coach of the John Carroll Blue Streaks football team, Team 100. Let me introduce you folks, ladies and gentlemen, to John Carroll interim head coach, Drew Nystrom. Coach Nystrom, thanks for taking the time to sit down with us. Thanks for having us. I really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. So just going to get started getting to know a little bit more about you. So you're originally from... Illinois, but you did play college football at Bowling Green here in Mm -hmm. Ohio, so there's a bit of an in-state connection there. How did you end up eventually finding your way here to John Carroll? Uh, It was really just a connection from Bowling Green. In 2019, I took a call. I was happy at my last place. We were doing some great things, and one of my former teammates and Jeff Fink gave me a call. He was getting elevated to the offensive coordinator role here, and uh, I'd played with him for four years at Bowling Green. He was my backup for a couple years at offensive tackle, and we roomed together on the road, and he's like, hey, listen, you know, because I'm going to go move back, coach the quarterbacks, and I want a guy in here who can coach the line that I trust and I understand uh, that's going to help understand the scheme and get the guys coached up well. And um, so it was really it was really the connection to Jeff Fink and then also the defensive coordinator here at the time, Joe Schaefer, was a teammate of mine as well. And he played, played defensive end, and we battled every single day for four years. So it was really, for me, an opportunity to come coach one of the best conferences in the country, coaching in the OAC, getting a chance to go against great competition week in and week out, um, You know, bring my wife a little bit closer to home. She's from the Cincinnati area. But mainly to be around you know, some individuals that I knew were going to make me a better coach because I knew they were hard workers. I knew they were disciplined. I knew they were intelligent. I knew they were going to make me better at what I do just by being around them. So that's part of the reason I jumped at the opportunity to come. And that connection really sounds like that brotherhood that's been established with the John Carroll football team and is kind of building onto that. How does it feel knowing that you are the head coach this year for the 100th team in John Carroll football history? Uh, the significance of that is not lost on me. It is, um, you know, it's a dream job. It's a dream opportunity, and it's one that I don't take lightly. There's been a great history of success here, both on the field and off the field. And I think that's part of the reason I think this opportunity is so special, because when you're coaching at John Carroll, you're coaching a great brand of football, but more importantly, you're coaching a great kid and you're coaching at a place where the values and the mission align of the institution align with the football program and produce great men and and, and women that go on and have an unbelievable amount of success in their chosen fields. And it's fun to be at a place where you talk about John Carroll to an incoming recruit, and it's really just about showing him all the different opportunities they can have. You're not selling them on anything. You're just educating them on the situation and on the school and all, all the opportunities that will be presented to them. And it's just an outstanding place to be and certainly one that uh, I'm excited to be at. And, you know, the history of the alumni and, and, and really our guys doing what they're doing on the field, it's awesome. It certainly shows how the position emphasizes not just coaching football, but Mm -hmm. building men for others, men of Carroll, and all that great stuff, which is what makes John Carroll such a great place. Um, So going back to you a little bit more, so you served as offensive coordinator here at Mm -hmm. John Carroll for both the spring and fall seasons in 2021, and you also served in that same capacity at uh, Division III Dubuque uh, from 2014 Mm -hmm. through 2018. So how would you say your previous coaching experience has prepared you to serve as head coach for John Carroll this season? Well, I've had the great luxury to really work underneath some outstanding coaches. Obviously, you get a chance to sit here and, and work underneath Coach Fanati for three years and get to, see, get to see how he operates within you know the John Carroll organization and, and the campus and get a chance to see just how he built the program up. And you know, you're taking over a program where it's really just putting your own spin on it, your own personality. It's not You're not rebuilding. You're not doing anything like that. It's already built on a strong foundation. So it's really just about taking what what's already existed and tweaking it or putting a, my own personality on it. Um, and I was fortunate, you know, in my time at Dubuque too. I worked underneath Stan Zweifel. He's in the Wisconsin Football Coaches Hall of Fame. I mean, I worked underneath two Hall of Fame coaches there. In fact, the tight ends coach was also in the Wisconsin Football Coaches Hall of Fame. So getting a chance to lean on them, you know, obviously seeing what they've done and, and taking everything they've done and, and saying, I like that or I'll, I'll tweak that a little bit. And um, But I've had the opportunity to really work for some great coaches and I'm taking as I'm listening to them as much as I can, soaking in as much as I can. And um, But also fortunate here to have a great coaching staff already in place where, you know, hopefully, you know, I, I understand that I'm not going to have all the answers for everything, but I, I have a great really, really intelligent staff and hardworking staff that 
they're going to work and find, you know, I don't know the answer. They're going to know the answer. And, or, or if we don't, we're going to find an answer. And that, that's what I think has been most exciting about is working with a really intelligent, competent staff that cares for the kids and works hard and um, we can lean on them as well. And that does really bring that team aspect Mm -hmm. into play, not just with the players, but also with you and your staff as well. And kind of speaking of those coaches that you've worked with, uh, you know, you're filling in right after Coach Finati uh, stepped down from his head coach post. But what has your relationship been like with him after you ended up taking the interim position? Are you two still in touch with each other? We're in touch a little bit. I texted with him a couple days ago. I was like, holy cow, coach. Like, I I was hoping to go grab breakfast with you or go do some things with you uh, before this season started. And I apologize because there's a lot to this job that, you know, you kind of know going into it that there's more to the job than than what you think. Um, And then you get a chance to to be in that role for a while. And then you start to really appreciate what my previous head coaches have done. There's a lot that they do that as an assistant, you're not necessarily aware of. So I actually sent him a text right before fall camp started. And I was like, hey, coach, really wanted to get up with you, but holy cow, this is a lot. I just, you know, hopefully we can get together at some point in time. And, you know, he responded, he's like, hey, this is your shot, man. Go ahead and take advantage of it. Totally understand rooting for you. And it's it's been a great relationship. We had a great relationship when he was here and it's been a great relationship since. And I know it's comforting for me to know if there's ever a time that I need him. He's a text away. He's a phone call away. Heck, he's only a couple of miles away um, to where I can reach out to him. And I know he'll get back to you because he loves John Carroll football. You know, he still does. And I think that's, a, you know, something that I think is I'm really appreciative of having him as a resource so close by when needed to. And that's certainly great that you two still are in touch and he's still, you know, keeping tabs on the mm-hmm. team and still just a phone call or text away if uh, you ever need him for any sort of advice or anything of that sort. John Carroll interim head coach Drew Nystrom is our guest here on the John Carroll football preview show. Turning to just the beginning of this season, you're facing Washington and Jefferson to open up 2022. There was a close loss last season, mm-hmm. 21 to 14 here in University Heights. So what do you think it's going to take for your team to be 1-0 at the end of week one? You know, it's going to take an entire team approach. We're going to have to play well offensively. We're going to have to play well defensively and on special teams. And I think one of the things that we're, we've been trying to focus on during camp is is focusing on us and what we can do and, and, and understanding that there's going to be certain situations that happen in a game that we don't have control over. And our response to those situations is, is ultimately what matters. Like there's going to be a penalty, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. There's going to be a penalty that happens during the game. And how do we respond to it if there's a turnover in the game how do we respond to it right and I think that's that's going to probably be the number one thing for us is how do we respond to different circumstances and situations that exist throughout the game and you know are we able to bounce off off the floor when it's a bad situation and are we able to come back down to level after something good you know you, you've got to maintain uh you know the term the jocko term the normal face right you gotta you gotta maintain your composure in all situations you can't get too high you can't get too low so where are we going to be in terms of responding to adversity and responding to good times as well and making sure that we execute from kickoff all the way through to the end of the game and there's certainly a lot of different aspects to the game obviously not just what happens physically but in terms of penalties or other adverse situations that can come up that uh, mental fortitude certainly a key component to a successful game for your team exactly um then just kind of building on to your team that you have right now there are obviously a lot of graduated young men oh, yeah. who graduated on both sides of the ball yeah. special teams included as well how would you say the team right now has looked during the off season or there any anything that has you really excited and looking forward to this season there's a lot that we're really excited about as a staff i think one of the things that's impressed me most about this team is their willingness to work together. And I think that's always been something that's a little bit special and unique to John Carroll. That's been a theme that I've I've noticed in my time here. There's a different type of kid that's on campus that um, produces for some great teams. But I think this one especially, there's a lot of youth on the team, but we have some significant leaders in different spots on both offensively and defensively that have stepped up in the absence of all those guys that have graduated from the year before. And they're really focusing on each other and themselves, right? You know, how are they responding to different things? And you ask them to do one small thing and it might not even come to application for another two or three days. And all of a sudden you turn on the film and three days later, you see 160 plus guys executing exactly what you asked them to do. And I think that's pretty special. Um, you know, whether or not that'll help us win or lose games, I, I don't know. But I know those are the small things that I think, you know, help facilitate success is when you're paying attention to some of the small details. And that's what I think our team has done a great job of is, you know, hey, I'm going to ask you guys to do this. Here's why I think we need to do it. 
all right, coach, we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and do that. And I, I've noticed that throughout camp, and I know that they've responded well to being coached hard. I know they responded well to, to being coached in different styles amongst the coaching staff. It's fun. I'm, I'm really excited to see what these guys can do. Certainly a lot of potential, and it sounds like, too, that they're catching on to everything you're asking of them to do mm-hmm. and preparing themselves to open this 2022 season. So I know we've talked a lot about on the football field. We're going to just venture a little bit off the field. Blue Streak Nation wanting to know a little yeah. bit more about you, Coach. Um, so what do you enjoy doing when you're not on the football field? I enjoy spending a ton of time with my wife and my dog. You know, it is. I got two cats as well. She'd be upset if I didn't put that in there. Um, but uh, really just spending a lot of time with her. She's my rock and my wife, Stephanie, and, and she's she's put a lot of her faith in me in, in terms of, you know, following me around in my career and, and, and leaving Cincinnati to go out to Iowa for the first time in her life and, and coming to Cleveland now and put her faith in me. So just really spending time with her, whether it's in the backyard, trying to get the yard looking nice or going to some of that, you know, Cleveland Metro parks and those type of areas. There's just a lot to do in the area. Um, and and we're, we're, we're pretty strong homebody. So we've really enjoyed living in the area. That's a great family tie that you have with your wife. And she certainly seems very supportive of the new position that you have as the John Carroll interim head coach. Uh, so we're going to go into our final segment of yeah. our interview. Do you want to thank you once again, coach, for taking the time to sit down with us? It's just a bit of a rapid fire type of segment. Just okay, some, no pressure. Just some quick favorites of yours. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get to know a little bit more about that. Are you ready? I hope. I, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So first off, what's your favorite food? Do I have to limit it? I'm a former can, offensive yeah. lineman. I'm a former <laughs> exactly. offensive lineman. I don't can, know. You, can, I don't can give maybe like two or three. That's good. Ah, man, pretty much anything my wife puts in front of me. She's a dynamic cook. I think there is a, um, a a turkey meatloaf that she makes that is just absolutely out of this world. And, you know, being the son of a, a grandson of a, a dairy farmer and, and, and someone who ran, raises cattle, saying turkey meatloaf, I never thought I would say it. It's, my, it's probably my wife's turkey meatloaf. Very good. How about your favorite show? Ooh, that is a great one. I'm a big fan of Seinfeld. Um, you know, I've tried going through all of his seasons there as well, and then a huge Law and Order SVU fan. So a little bit of comedy, a little bit oh, of seriousness, yeah. yep. dynamic duo there. Absolutely. How about your favorite movie? Gladiator. That one I don't have to. I, that one I don't have to think about too much. Gladiator for sure. That's the one that I could watch over and over and over again. And then, and Top Gun, the old school one. That was when I was growing up. That was number one. Did you see the new one? Of I haven't one? had a chance to see it yet. It was getting. I was too, preparing for fall camp too much. So hopefully, I'll get a chance to see that after the season. So certainly had a great excuse for that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A uh, favorite musician. Ooh, another challenging one for me. Um, country artist Phil Vassar. Not one that you typically think of, but Phil Vassar's definitely up there. Um, and I'm also a big fan of Lil Wayne. Absolutely. Then how about your favorite book? Now, that's a challenging one. I would say probably the the two or three that were probably the most paradigm shifting for me um, was Outliers, was definitely by Malcolm Gladwell, um, The Power of Habit, and then Extreme Ownership. Wide selection there for sure with the favorite book. And then finally, since you are serving as a head coach this year, how about your favorite all-time football coach? Oh, for me, the three I had in in college. Well, I had a lot. You know, it, I can't put one. There's Matt Campbell, Greg Stadrawa, Aaron Hillman, Dave Whitson, Chris Shrimp, like it, it, Greg Brandon, all the ones that I've had a chance. To, that's why I'm sitting here. I, I, I haven't had a bad coach. Um, and I look up to the ones I actually had and the ones that I've worked with more so than, you know, the ones that I've read books about. So anyone who I've had the chance to play under or work with, those are my guys. Those are my favorite coaches for sure. Well, it's fantastic to hear that all the coaches that you've played for had such a tremendous, great influence on you and mm-hmm. in getting into the role that you are currently in with John Carroll Football. Coach, uh, it's about all the time we have, but thanks so much for taking the time to sit down with us and best of luck this 2022 season. Awesome. Thank you. That was John Carroll Football Head Coach Drew Nystrom, interim coach for this season. And coming up, we'll be going through a preview of today's matchup between your John Carroll Blue Streaks and the Washington and Jefferson Presidents right here on your home for John Carroll Football, WJCU 88.7.